Time now is 7.23. Suicide, bankruptcy and divorce. Just some of the issues expected to come under the spotlight as the first report into the harms of gambling published later today. Now, this comes as charities warn that one-fifth of the UK population could be affected by gambling. With us this morning, uh, John Myers, who lost his son Ryan to gambling-related suicide. Alongside him um, is Will Prohaska, who is from the Coalition Against Gambling Ads. Very good morning to both morning. of you. Thank you for your time morning. this morning. Uh, I wonder, John, if we could start with you. The, you're, you are campaigning now. It's for a very personal reason. It's ten years, I think, yes. since yes. Uh, Ryan lost his life. Yeah. Do you mind sharing with us a little Not bit of that story so Not people so. understand how it's affected yeah. you? Yeah, so um, we knew how Ryan had a bet, like a lot of people, but when you spoke to him about it, it was always... It's just a little bit bet on the football because he's a Liverpool fan. He, you know, he would bet on football, he would bet on the golf, but it didn't seem to be much really. He was always very careful with his money, so we'd always say, you know, you know me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend all my money on this. Why would I do that? Um, we'd uh, we'd been away on holiday. Um, we'd had a great holiday. It'd been a cracking time. Ryan had been Ryan again. He's always, he was always very happy, very. It's a very self-effacing. He could laugh at himself, you know what I mean? He was that kind of person. And uh, we came back on the early hours of Friday morning. Everything was fine. His mum phoned him on this Saturday. He was in a good mood again. He said he was getting ready for work. Uh, he was going to get back to work next week and everything like that. He'd done all his washing from, from uh, on the holidays. And then everything was great. And then on a Sunday morning, he put something on social media, telling everybody he was very sorry. Um, Something was going on, so we tried to phone him. Couldn't get in touch with him. Um, went down to his his house. On the way down there, my phone rang, and it was his number. And I said, "Do you here?" And uh, it wasn't. It was. Uh, it was somebody telling us we better get down there as quick as we could. And when we went down there, the ambulance was there, the police was there. Uh, we went to go in the house, and there's a policeman on the stairs, and he's been, Upstairs, so we started to go upstairs. He said, No, you can't go upstairs. He's self harmed. I'm thinking, He's self harmed, so what? You know what I mean? He's, he's cut himself or something like that, like, you know. And we said, No, we want to see him. And he just said, No, life's extinct. So. Look, I, um, um, have a sip of water. Uh, the reason this is so important is because you started, didn't you, to try and, in your grief at that time, and obviously that's, that's ongoing, is to piece together. Yeah. What had brought him to that point, which yeah. is why you campaign now. Yeah. So, yeah, so... The first hint, really, was we saw a betting slip on the floor. And when we looked at it, it was a receipt from a betting shop and his card had been declined. He'd only been paid the day before. So why has his card been declined? So that was the first hint of what was going on. And then I managed to get onto his social media account and he was uh, having conversations with another gambling addict. And that's when we found out how deep it was and how, how bad it was. Um, he, he was trying to stop. It was a number of times when he, when he had tried to stop, but he felt that he was getting pulled back in all the time, either with text from the gambling industry asking him to have a free bet here, a free bet there. As he said, you go down the street, there'd be adverts everywhere. You look in the newspaper, there's adverts. You look on the TV, there's adverts. And it was all pulling him back in and pulling him back in. We found that there'd been a couple of other occasions where he'd spent all his money, all his, all his wages on the gambling. And, and that's when hindsight comes in. You look at it and you think of the times, things that happened around about that time. Like one time he, he loved his van. He, he was a carpenter, he had his own van. He, he, he kitted it out himself, so it, it was what he wanted. And then he came to me and said, I'm selling me, me van, Dad. I said, what are you doing that for? He said, oh, what works, give me one. And you think, you know, but when, when I looked, that was one of the times when he lost this money. This is the so... thing. We've heard this so many times about how the lies start yeah. coming in to cover up mm. what they feel guilty about, and they, but they can't stop mm -hmm. either. Um, Will, this report today, um, the first annual report of Gambling Survey of Great Britain, it's all very well, uh, but we keep hearing stories like this. So what does this report, what is hope from this report will actually have tangible impacts on people who are addicted to gambling and for which it is ruining their lives. 
That's right, Nagel. We don't need statistics to, no. sh to show us the harm which has been caused by the gambling industry in this country. But the statistics up until now, up until 9.30, when these ones are published, have been woefully inadequate. The Gambling Commission, for years, have been undercounting the number of people who are harmed and actually how they're harmed by their interaction with the gambling industry. So it's been really important that they change their methodology. Right? They used to just call people up up and ask them how they were harmed, if they were harmed, and often people would be in the room with their family. So they're going to underrepresent what they're doing with the gambling Will industry. Will would never right? have said yes, would he? Because he just <coughs> said he put... Ryan would never have said yeah, yes, Ryan, right? Ryan would never yeah. have put a better, better not better Because there's, there's, there's this stigma about being a gambling addict, which we've just got to get rid of. Because when people go up to people and say, I've got a gambling addiction, you just go, well, I have a bet, just stop. So I, mean, I drive a car, but yeah. I don't crash every day, you know what I mean? It's... So these new statistics are going to shine a light not just on the numbers of people who are likely being harmed in, in uh, Great Britain, although the Gambling Commission will be... They've put lots of caveats around the statistics because they're under an awful lot of pressure from the gambling industry not to use these stats and not to use the new methodology because the gambling industry don't like the answer that this methodology is coming to. I which suppose is... in a way, Will, because we're, we're ahead of the statistics. Yeah. We don't have those yet. 9.30 this morning. Uh, and then what, I suppose, mm. is the question. Because you, you, we, we, let's not predict what they're going to say, but what do you do with that information? So that the new government has got an amazing opportunity here, actually. They've inherited a half-finished job, which was based on bad information from the Conservative government. So the Conservative government thought that there was X, X number of people harmed by the gambling industry. We're about to find out what a much better number is. Um, and I think that's really going to focus minds with the new government. They've got this fantastic opportunity to act quickly because there are some reforms which the last government put on the table but that didn't become enacted. And I think those need to be flowed through Parliament absolutely urgently. What's one that's going to tangibly make a difference? One will be a statutory levy, so we need this new tax on the gambling operators to pay for independent research, prevention and treatment. Another is stake limits online, so at the moment you can gamble unlimited amounts per spin online on an online slot machine every two and a half seconds. The industry will take any amount of money from you, and that needs to be capped. Now, the last government thought it should be capped at £5. That's a nonsense. It needs to be much, much lower. So the Labour government can come in and they can look at this seriously with much better information and they can go much further and much faster. Have you, John, had the chance to put your story, your family's story, directly to politicians in the past? Because it sounds like it's, it's something that gets parked a lot, a lot of times along the way. We, we, we have uh, had a lot of good, good words when we've gone to the Labour Party conference before. And we've, we've had a stand at Labour Party conference with Gambling With Lives, which is a group of people who have lost their children due to, gam due to gambling addiction. We've been there, we've been out there, we've talked to people. What we're getting back from the potential MPs at the time, we're, we're saying, yes, this is good, we will do our best. Now we need them to do what they said they were going to do. We need them to stand up and say, yes, you're right, we need to do something and this is what we're going to do. We appreciate your time this morning, John. Thank you so much. And Will, thank you as well. We'll watch 9.30 this morning is when those figures come out. So we'll yeah. see those and be reporting on those, of course. Thank you. Thank you.